Hi, today I'm going to talk about what are the uh, projects you can do in quantitative finance as a beginner. So if you have done some courses, you have read some books and you want to do some projects uh, in quant finance, what are the beginner level projects you can try out? Now these projects that I'm going to be talking about can be done uh, without uh, using a lot of uh, sophisticated mathematics. You may not need a lot of uh, uh, lot of data. You may need some data, but that's uh, quite easily accessible. Uh, and as a beginner, you will still feel comfortable playing around with uh, you know these uh, you know simple algorithms and and yeah, be interested in how you can do some of the projects easily. So first that I'm going to talk about is the stock price uh, forecasting project. Uh, well, forecasting stock price is an easy project, but can also be an extremely difficult project. If you're if you're doing this in the real world, it's an extremely difficult problem uh, to predict, uh, you know, price of uh, stocks or returns of stocks in the future. But if you're just playing around with the historical stock price data, and not investing your own money uh, based on the results, then you can play around, right? So then the project becomes much easier, right? Try out some of the time series modeling techniques, whether it's ARIMA or whether it's, uh, you know, other uh, modeling techniques used in time series data, such as moving average models and so on. Uh, you can also try some machine learning modeling techniques, such as the LSTM model, which is also used for time series forecasting. Just try that, compare with with the ARIMA, uh, ARIMA modeling and see which one works better. Uh, increase your sample size um, and backtest it with the historical data. See whether you know the forecasting model that you have built is working fine in the historical data or not. Take out of sample uh, you know, data to test your model. Um, use all kinds of uh, cross-validation techniques People don't use cross-validation techniques in econometrics, but do use that because that's a wonderful technique that people in machine learning side use. That's actually a really good way of testing your, your, your model performance. I do that. Uh, use all kinds of techniques to assess the model performance. That can be a very good beginner level project. You can also use um, algorithms to predict whether the stock will go up or down. Now that's different from predicting the stock price because when you predict the stock price, you are not just predicting whether it's going to go up or down, but you're also predicting the actual movement, right? To what extent the price will move up or to what extent the price will move down, right? That's not something you are doing if you're just predicting whether it's going to up, go up or go down, right? That becomes a classification problem. Whereas uh, the previous one was a regression type of problem, as in you are trying to predict the actual value, not trying to uh, predict whether it's going to be yes or no, uh, up or down, right? It becomes a classification problem if you want to just predict whether the price will go up or go down. Then use, you know, um, logistic regression, which can be used, uh, which is a regression modeling technique, but can be used for classification purpose or use other class ML classification algorithms such as boosting or bagging, uh, support vector machine, decision tree. Uh, you can try out all kinds of uh, modeling techniques and see which one uh, works the best for the given uh, stock. Again, like the previous one, what I said, you can also do cross validation, take uh, different samples to cross validate your uh, model and see actually whether the model performance is consistent across samples or not. If that is not the case, then there's something wrong with the model. Uh, try fine tuning the parameters, um, do some uh, tuning as in, just keep trying actually, you know, how many variables uh, really actually are important uh, for, for the models, you know, keep trying. I mean, there are some automatic way of doing that also. But I wouldn't advise you to do that or you know, use those automatic technique. Just uh, use your own knowledge of uh, using variables and dropping variables. You can also compare the performance within automatic techniques. 
such as stepwise regressions and stepwise logistic regression or you can also use stepwise techniques in um, ML uh, for ML algorithms such as boosting bagging as well um, but try out both you can also build some models uh, for volatility forecasting uh, take some highly volatile volatile assets such as crypto for example crypto data uh, crypto prices are very volatile Bitcoin for example uh, try to predict the standard deviation of uh, of the you know crypto price such as Bitcoin for the next one year right that could be a very challenging project for a beginner uh, because uh, forecasting price is one thing forecasting standard deviation of prices is completely different thing right that becomes more challenging actually um, you can try with uh, the same type of algorithm that we have used and you may not succeed uh, for a variety of reasons but you can also use some of the techniques which are uh, very popular in variance forecasting such as arch and guards if you have done financial econometrics you should be comfortable using these models to forecast volatility of uh, any financial asset uh, I would also advise you to use some of the ML algorithms to do that uh, support vector machines or uh, any of these boosting bagging tree models you know these models are very good at capturing the non-linearity in the data try these models to forecast standard deviation right it may be a challenge actually many people may not even think about using these models for variance forecasting but you can try that there's nothing wrong with that uh, of course it's not going to be a univariate analysis you will have to then uh, get uh, external variables uh, to do that right whether external variables are um, able to predict the very you know the variability in the prices of uh, a financial asset such as bitcoin that will be interesting to know now you may not succeed because you are not investing your money right so you can try out everything right um, as long as it is theoretically fine to use uh, some of these uh, models in in forecasting purpose then it, it's fine right things may not work uh, they may not these variables may not be able to predict the the variations in the prices of the of, of a financial asset but that's fine nothing wrong in just trying um, another project that you can try uh, is about valuation of uh, financial asset one asset being the real estate right uh, not many people talk about how to value given real estate right um, you have valuation models for options for different type of derivatives but you may not you know we don't see actually many models uh, theoretical models used for house price valuations but you can you can try out just take house price data collect data related to you know the different things that affect house price right location data for example uh, macroeconomic data house price index for example which is a macroeconomic data take these variables and try to predict the the house price um, the short term house price in, in like the price of some houses in three months time six months time one year time you can also try to predict uh, in couple of years time that will also be interesting right use all kinds of techniques uh, and see which one works best for the problem okay um, there are more problems the more problems you can try out for example you can do some basic trading uh, such as uh, you can do pair trading um, if I've learned some of the time series modeling techniques right uh, you can you can try out pair trading as well you can do some portfolio optimization problems also you know uh, there are some very um, you know academic models for portfolio optimization don't go with that just uh, use your common sense use whatever simple modeling technique that you have learned to um, build a portfolio that optimizes the return right um, if you have learned some optimization techniques um, you know I have discussed optimization techniques on this channel many times uh, if you have learned some of these uh, algorithms uh, on your own just try out how to you know select stocks that optimizes the return in short term in medium term in long term 
right? Uh, you're not using your own money. You're not buying stocks. So you, you have all the flexibility to do research. As a beginner, uh, you can you could try anything and everything, right? These are some of the projects that you could do in quantitative finance uh, as a beginner. There are more projects also you could try. For example, one classic modeling project that beginners are asked to do is uh, building a default probability model, building a scorecard to predict um, probability of default in loan portfolio. Um, you have credit card data or mortgage data or personal loan data, student loan data. I think on internet you can find these data sets very easily uh, on Kaggle but also on other places. Uh, just take these data sets uh, and try to build a scorecard model to predict uh, the probability or chances of uh, customers defaulting on their loan payment. Right? You could also build models on fraud, anti-money laundering. You can also use uh, some of these data sets and uh, use ML algorithms to predict uh, chances of a given transaction being fraud, uh, being a fraud transaction. There you will face... Uh, a big challenge of uh, imbalance being the data set being imbalanced because uh, there are not many fraud cases uh, you know uh, in in a fraud data set so how do you predict chances of uh, a given transaction being fraud where in the training data set itself you have just few frauds so how do you build such a model right so that will challenge you a bit more right then you will learn something about how to rebalance the data how to make an unbalanced data, a balanced data, and then build models, right? Um, it will be a good learning experience as well. Okay. These are some of the projects that you could try. Uh, if you have any further questions on that, please let me know in the comment section. And uh, if you want to learn quantitative finance, uh, if you are a beginner and you want to learn some quantitative finance, uh, because you want to work uh, in the quantitative finance world or you are already in quantitative finance, you are, you are working in some banks, <coughs> uh, but you, you are still a beginner, uh, you do not have enough experience and you want to enhance your knowledge on varieties of topics such as uh, financial econometrics, asset pricing, um, quant trading, quant investment, uh, in credit risk modeling, market risk modeling, uh, then I have a beginner friendly uh, quantity finance course that covers all these topics and that also covers a lot of the projects that you know I have discussed. Um, let me know. I will be happy to share the details with you but also help you in your in your, in your career in, in, in some some ways. Thank you and see you in another video guys.